Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a very exciting video. It is my episode number 52 of my Will I Buy It series. So I do my Will I Buy It's usually bi-weekly because I feel like so many people do it every week and I'm sure it gets very stressful for you guys to have to keep up with so many of the videos. So I like to pace them out, do them every other week and make them a little longer because I love long videos. So you know, leave me your feedback if you think I should do these weekly or maybe don't do them at all or do one every month. I would love all that input down in the comments. It's a new year, so I'm always looking for ways to make my channel more suitable for your guys' viewing pleasure. And second thing I want to tell you guys is I finally did some merch. Well, I always kind of had a little merch store and I was doing it on my own, but my husband actually helped design this little logo girl for me. So this is a Makeup Savage. This is actually supposed to be me. I know, I know, she's like extra skinny, but um, basically she's a little cave girl with her little cave outfit and she says Makeup Savage right here and you guys know I love me a good pink hoodie so I did pick up a hoodie just to see what the quality is like and the best part of all, one second here, drum roll please, I put a logo, a big one on the back so I just thought it would be a fun way to kind of brand the shirt because you can put something on the back and if you don't like the big girl on the back, I also did versions of this shirt where she was on the front and then it just says Makeup Savage on the back so it kind of looks like a jersey. I don't know, I did play around and see kind of different ways of how I could structure the hoodie and I'm totally open to adding like more t-shirts or if you guys want to do like blankets or there's so many options on Teespring. Just let me know what you guys would like to see in my merch store. I will link it in my description box if you guys are interested in picking any of this stuff up. I've bought merch before. I have Angie's merch. I have Amy's merch. So I bought Amy's hoodie and this is the same material. I think all their hoodies are the same material and it's super soft and cozy. And I did have a subscriber, a very sweet subscriber. She bought one of my old merch items that I had just created, but I didn't even really like tell anyone about it. And she said she loves how soft and comfortable these are. So I believe most small YouTubers use Teespring. So um, I haven't had any problems with the quality, but yeah, we have merch. And I thought it was really fun that it said Makeup Savage because it's like Amy's merch where it says like proud makeup lover. I think it can like apply to so many of you. It doesn't have to be like very like specifically me. Uh, but then you'll always have a little piece of me with you wherever you go. And I did onesies because I thought that would be kind of fun if you guys have kids or like little nieces and nephews because they had onesie options. And it's never too soon to start growing a little makeup savage, in my opinion. So I thought that was really fun. I did some t-shirts. Any questions you guys have on my merch, let me know down in my comment section. I'm wearing an extra large just because I like my hoodies to be really baggy and soft. So I think I could probably fit in a large. And I kind of want to order Rail something too. We'll see. But yeah, he designed it. And basically this is like his creation. I'm just there, but I'm I'm so happy because that was very, very kind of him to do that for me. So yeah, let me know your feedback on the merch down in the comment section and let me know what you think. Let me know if I should change something. Totally open to input from you guys. So now that we've talked ourselves to death on the subject of merch, I'm going to pull up my trusty friend Trend Boot, because there are a ton of new releases coming out for 2020 already. Also, this look, I don't think it's gonna be up yet, but I did get my Tri Beauty Box with Angie in the mail recently, so I did create this look. And if you guys are interested in seeing this, definitely subscribe, because it is coming up. And I'm on a low buy. I don't know if that video is gonna be up either, but basically, I decided what was best for me is to go on a low buy, a product specific no buy and a low buy. So on my no buy side, I'm not really buying any complexion products. 
on my low buy side, I'm only buying four eyeshadow palettes a month. And we're going to assess every two months because I don't want to overwhelm myself and say it's for a year and like put all these crazy restrictions on myself. And if you don't agree with that, that's okay. This is my channel, my low buy. You can do your low buy however you want to do it. And this is how I'm going to do it. So disclaimers are all done. So the first thing on Trend Mood here is the new Valentine's Day Hourglass launch and it is a new limited edition Confessions Ultra Slim High Intensity Refillable Set. Two exclusive shades in sleek gold applicators, la da 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 da. Only You and I Hope We. These are pretty. I really like Only You because it's like a brown shade. It's actually very similar to this shade I have on today. So this is from Angie's collab with Tri Beauty Box and it's Jared Cosmetics Mudslide. I really like this color. It is a little bit drying, so I threw on a gloss, but after I put the gloss on, it's fine. So I like that color. The I Hope We is not really my color. I don't really like wearing pink lipsticks. Doesn't really look very good on me, so I will be passing. Holy crap, this is $72. That's crazy. Okay, next thing. This is funny. So Morphe's coming out with like a Icy Fantasy Artistry palette. So basically it's a pastel palette and the swatches are on like all three arms look tan to me. So I don't know. These look doctored. <laughs> like it looks like somebody was photoshopping these and forgot to change the skin tone on the arms or something like that. So you guys will have to tell me if that's what you think too because I'm not an expert on this stuff by any means. So they're doing a 35 pan palette and then they're doing um, three lipsticks. I actually don't hate the palette. I just feel like this didn't have to be a 35 pan palette. I think they should have taken out the two bottom rows and kind of just made it a pastel fantasy. And what I'm really hoping is that the pigmentation is there because this could be such a great palette for Morphe's market, except if they screw up the formula, it's gonna be a mess like a pastel -y mess and so usually I would be open to trying it but since I can only buy four eyeshadow palettes this month this is definitely not catching my eye at all. So Trend Mood is coming out with her next beauty box and she revealed that she's gonna have a special collab with the brand Sigma where they're doing an eye trio including three eye brushes with exclusive custom made packaging purple handles with their logo. I actually really, really like these brushes. They're really beautiful. It would be cool if Sigma made them available outside of the Trend Mood box, but I'm guessing it's like an exclusive thing, so probably not. But I do love the purple handles, and I think it's really beautiful. The box is coming out January 13th, and I guess you can sign up for first access. I remember the first one came out, and it sold out pretty quick and I think a lot of people were pretty disappointed that they weren't able to get it. I personally wasn't really very, mm, what's the word? I wasn't very hyped to try her box because most of those products, I had the stuff I wanted and then everything else in there I wasn't really that curious about. So I'm feeling the same way about this one. There's nothing in this box that I'm like dying to have. So I'll be passing on that. And then Tati Beauty finally showed us what they were launching. And they launched two, like, I don't even know what these are called, like, pads? <laughs> like, sponges? I don't know. Blend, blendiful. Um, two sizes for $18. And she did restock her eyeshadow palette. Spoiler alert, one of my palettes for January was the Tati Beauty palette and I wasn't planning on buying it. I was really not very interested in it except I just thought it would be fun to get it because so there's obviously a lot of YouTube channels I love to watch and there's so many people with such polarizing opinions on the Tati palette that I just wanted to try it for myself and I've been getting back into neutrals as well. I love color. I love neutrals so I thought it would be funny if I tried it just to see like what side of the spectrum I was on because like 
Teresa's Dead hates her neutral palette. I think my friend Vanessa got it and she didn't really like it either. L my friend Leticia loves it. So it's just really funny how many women in my life like either love it or hate it. So I'm like, I respect all of these women. So I want to know if I'm on the love side or the hate side. I don't know. One of my low buy rules is not buying things after the launch date, but I was so curious with the Tati palette. I really hope I like it because if I hate it, I'm going to be really pissed that I used one of my four palettes for Tati, but whatever. I'm I'm excited to see what I think about it. The two like powder puff things I'm not interested in, but I'm very curious about the palette. So the next thing that ugh, I really kind of want this but I don't think I need it and I'm curious to see reviews on it because I don't know if it'll be good or bad <laughs> but Bite Beauty is coming out with complexion products so they have the Changemaker Supercharged Micellar Foundation which is $40 and the Changemaker Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder for $36. They also came out with some primers and some new lip products as well as two agave lip masks that they're well known for um, but yeah, the um, foundation sounds really good. It's like a medium coverage, 32 shades, and it says it mimics skin texture for a natural flawless finish. So it sounds, you know, very nice. Um, I have a lot of really full coverage foundations. It's very cold where I live, so every once in a while I'm like, mm, I kind of wish I had something more hydrating to wear, but... We'll see how it goes. I'm going through a rough patch right now, but I do have this Laura Mercier. I have a bunch of foundations that I'm like really, really close to finishing. So I'm trying to be really good. Again, as part of my no buy, foundations are on there. So if I want this at in March, I can maybe reassess if I really, really want it or if I hear really, really good things. Maybe I'll pick it up then, but for right now, I just want to finish up these like foundations where I have like a little bit left and just admire it from a distance. I don't need to buy everything that launches. So yeah, totally fine with that. So the next thing that I was struggling, this was funny. I talked about this on my Instagram stories. ColourPop launched their mint collection. So this consisted of a mint to be eyeshadow palette some super shock shadows and some glitterly obsessed and a set from fourth ray didn't really care about the other products but the palette was definitely very very tempting i'm so tempted by ColourPop. it's crazy i just think of like how much i spent on them even in the last month of december because i bought the bare necessities palettes as gifts for people and i also picked up the it's all good palette in December, so I really, really, really don't want to buy ColourPop this month, and they're kind of on my no-buy list so far. I have a few brands on there, like BH Cosmetics, Charlotte Tilbury, brands I just don't want to buy from this year, but I'm going to see how it goes, especially with it just being every two months, give myself a little break if I need it, but yeah, I really thought this was such a cool idea, but again, it's like okay the palette's really cheap but if you don't if you only want to buy the palette you end up spending almost twenty dollars with shipping just to get a twelve dollar palette and then if you don't want to pay for shipping you have to spend thirty dollars to get free shipping and that's really dangerous too because then it's inviting more palettes into my life that i don't want and i did that so many times last year and i still have so many ColourPop palettes that i'm like mm realistically I didn't need to buy that and one of my huge goals of 2020 is to just try them all out I keep looking at them because they're on the shelf over there um, is to just try them all out and decide like should you stay or should you go and I started with the um the blue one the little nine pan blue palette and I used it on my birthday actually and then I was like oh this is nice but I have so many blues now with like my Melt palette. You know, I have other blues in other palettes that I would rather keep. So yeah, it's just a matter of like me really, you know, narrowing things down. Like I have blues in my Whale Song palette, like, you know, so yeah. I think having that restriction on ColourPop is really going to help me look at my own collection and not 
Bye, bye, bye. So Huda Beauty Launch Matte and Metal Melted Double Ended Eyeshadow is some new shades. So she did um, a Cool Tone Mauve, a Dusty Pastel Lavender, Smoky Olive Taupe Shade, Warm Spicy Brown Matte, and then Plum Pink with Warm Rosy Tones. So I feel like these were so hyped when they first launched, but it's like the same as the Stila Glitter and Glows. Like, they were so interesting, and then people kind of like backed off of it. So I like don't ever use my Stila Glitter and Glows. They're just sitting there in a drawer, and I feel like it's the same concept with the Huda ones. I think the cool thing about the Huda is you can do a whole eye look with it. You can blend the matte and put the shimmer on your lid and you're kind of good to go. I did try one, but I didn't love it, so I ended up taking it back, and so I won't buy any more because it's just not something I'm interested in. I don't like stuff like that. I'm like mainly an eyeshadow palette person, so I'm okay with passing on those. So Jue is sneak peeking a new Essential High Coverage Concealer Pen, and basically it looks like it's launching on January 16th. Doesn't say how much this is gonna be, um, but it looks like a very, basically looks like a stick concealer. I would be really interested to see what kind of consistency this is because, I don't know, sometimes I think like stick, stick products that are so thin like that could easily like snap off. So I'll be curious to see what people think of it, but I'm not planning on buying it. And so the next thing I'm talking about, I'm really excited. This is going to be my next palette buy for January. It's the Anastasia X Amorizi eyeshadow palette. And this is launching on January 14th. And then it'll be in stores on the 19th. I'm really excited for this. So this is 16 shades. So it's a little bit extra. It's got two extra shades. And it does have pressed glitters, but I don't really mind. I feel like there's a lot of you know, mixed opinions, and even I felt like when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it looks like the modern renaissance with some pops of color, but I'm also really excited because I feel like I couldn't tell you the last time I used my modern renaissance, and I couldn't tell you the last time I used my Norvina palette. I have them in my collection, and they're like staples in my collection, but I love the fact that this is kind of like an updated version of those palettes, and I feel like this is like 2020, you know, so I think for people just getting into the makeup market and newly getting into makeup, I think this is going to be like their modern renaissance palette and sometimes I think that's just okay. I think it's okay for Anastasia to do something basic and I don't know. I just think that if this Amrizi palette is going to be to somebody in 2020, what the Dress Your Face palette was to me when I first started getting into makeup. It's going to be something very special for somebody out there. And I don't know, it just seems really cool. The next thing I want to talk about is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette for $75. So this palette, I don't know, it just looks boring. My friend Nethmi really wanted this, but she bought the Charlotte Tilbury Holiday Palette like this for $75, and she said it was horrible. And we were talking on Instagram, she's like, I want it, and I was like, don't do it. It's such a waste of money. And so the day shades are two shimmers, one matte, desk shades are three mattes, date shades are three mattes, and then dream shades are two shimmers and a matte. And I like Charlotte Tilbury. I really, really want to be really into Charlotte Tilbury, but I feel like her brand is just not tan girl friendly, to be honest, to me. Um, I do know a lot of tan girls, brown girls that like Charlotte Tilbury products, but I'm just not one of those people, which is why she's on my no buy list for 2020, but I don't know. I guess I just wanted to talk about it so we could talk about it and move on with our lives. The next palette is um, an indie palette, and this is by the brand Clarity Cosmetics, and it's called the, Br the Blue Royal Palette. Six shadows, three mattes, three foils for $30. I think this is one of those palettes where if I wasn't on a low buy, I would have kind of like really jumped on it. But 
I just don't need another palette with all blue shadows. And so I'm not going to get this, but I'm excited because I think Teresa bought this and I think Amy Loves Makeup also bought this palette. So I'm very excited for their videos, but I don't know. It's just like, it's so much blue and I don't know. I just feel like I wouldn't get any use out of it, but I think it's very, very cool. So Estee Lauder did a special collaboration with Danielle Lauder, who is the great granddaughter of Estee Lauder. And I think, who was it? Somebody was saying how they watched like the reveal video and it just looked very sweet and sentimental. I feel like this is definitely like still very bougie looking and I love Estee Lauder double wear, but, and I really like the brand, but I don't like any of it enough to go out and buy this. I don't know. She um, definitely looks like she likes very natural makeup and, you know, I don't know. She looks like a bougie white lady, I guess. So um, I'm happy that they did a collab, but it's definitely not my style. So Milani came out with a bunch of new products and I'm really interested in this foundation. This is the Screen Queen foundation with a natural finish for a luminous skin with digital blue light filter technology in 45 shades. So I really like Milani. They're probably my favorite drugstore brand that you can actually buy in the drugstore. And um, I'm really excited for this foundation. I saw Trend Mood recently swatched all 45 shades and I think I'll be able to find a decent color match. I'm not supposed to be buying foundations, but honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna break my foundation no buy for that particular foundation because I just think something that's more natural, maybe a little less full coverage for me right now would be perfect. So I definitely have my eye on that. We'll see. We'll see how easy it is to find. I definitely need to find it in store. I don't really want to order it online and do that song and dance. So hopefully it'll be easy to find. If it's not easy to find, I'm not going to get it. So MAC finally launched their Lunar New Year collection. And everyone's going nuts for the highlighter, as you can imagine. It's like a beautiful embossed golden dragon on there. And even I was like, mm, I kind of want it. But the highlighter is like 30 something dollars. It's 36 Seven, is that right? I don't know. It's expensive and I have so many highlighters. Again, highlighters is also on my no buy category for 2020. So I'm not going to buy it even though it's beautiful. I just don't need it. Elf also came out with a bunch of new stuff and they added some eye primers. They're called the putty eye primer and it says it locks in eyeshadow for 12 hours of crease proof wear. This sounds very curious. A lot of people say it looks like the MAC Paint Pots, and I have to agree. $5 is a great price. I like that there's different colors for different skin tones. I think that's always a good thing, and I'm not going to buy it because I'm not buying eyeshadow primers. I am very loyal to my P. Louise eyeshadow base, so until I find something better than that, I'm not switching, and eye primers is on my no-buy list as well. So I'm good. I'm all set. So the brand Pinky Rose is coming out with a new palette. I hate this palette so much. Oh God, it's so ugly. I'm so mean, but it's, I think it's so ugly. So this is 10 different shades and it's called the Stormy Palette by Pinky Rose. And I think it's a Riley Rose exclusive. And it's like very primary colors with some shimmer shades. I don't know. I just, ooh. I hate the eyeshadow pans, like the lightning bolts. That's, who I don't like it. So I'm passing on that. And then Kathleen Lights is collaborating with Briogeo. I didn't watch this video because I'm not really into this kind of stuff, but this is part of their like wellness line. And it's an aromatic essential oil kit for $38. It is a limited edition collection for aromatherapy oils created by Kathleen to help promote well-being for the mind, body, and spirit. That sounds right up her alley, definitely not up my alley, so I'm going to be passing on that. And then ColourPop launched a Lunar New Year collection. I do really like ColourPop's Super Shock blushes. I think they're beautiful. I think they are just so beautiful the way they like blend on the skin. So this really caught my eye. 
but blush and highlight again are on my no buy list so I won't be picking any of that stuff up but I did think it was really cute. So It Cosmetics is coming out with a new addition to their Bye Bye Foundation family. This is called the Bye Bye Foundation Oil Free 3 Piece Complexion Set. New Bye Bye Foundation Oil Free Matte Full Coverage Moisturize designed to deliver hydration as you moisturize and protect your skin. So I don't really like It Cosmetics foundations because I always feel like they have like a gray undertone on me. My dear, dear friend Letitia sent me a few different foundations from them and I tried to make them work, but I always feel like I look gray when I wear It Cosmetics and the Bye Bye CC foundation or whatever that everyone raves about. So I'm not really interested in trying anything from them. Too Faced does that too. Too Faced Born This Way foundation also goes gray on me. I don't know why, but that's okay. There's plenty of other foundations out there. So passing on that. And Glam Light came out with a new eyeshadow palette. This is their cake palette. And I was so excited for this. I was thinking it was going to be like very pink and like strawberry cake or like sprinkles. And that's kind of the vibe. Like some of these quads are so pretty, like the shade Lavender and Blueberry looks so good. But then they added like the green and like the oranges. And I feel like, the, for instance, the shade Key Lime looks exactly like the matte green in like the burger palette, which I have. So even though I really, really wanted this palette, well, I didn't really want it. It also reminded me a lot of their paint palette, which I already have. And I like Glam Light's formula and I want to support them but I don't need to buy another rainbow palette from them to, you know, prove a point <laughs> or do a review because it's just boring to me. So I know Angie and Amy both bought these palettes, so I'm excited to see their videos, but I personally passed on it. So, so Auntie Pat decided to do some limited edition packaging again. I don't know why she keeps doing this. This is really cute though. So she did mini matte trans lipstick trios in limited edition packaging so these are like fun bright colored packaging and I like her matte lipsticks but I'm not buying lipsticks for packaging so passing on that and then for her Lunar New Year she did her eyeshadow palette called Golden Opulence and some mini lip gloss trios so I love Papagrat's lip gloss formula and I think the minis are a really fun way to try them, but I'm not going to buy any more lip glosses. Again, lip glosses are also on my no buy list for 2020. I did pick up the eyeshadow palette. This is my second palette purchase for January 2020, and I will film a video on this and hopefully have that up on my channel pretty soon here, but this is what this one looks like. This was one of those purchases that I like almost instantly regret it because it looks exactly like all her other palettes she's been launching recently. And I recently saw Mel Thompson's review on that palette and I feel very much the same way Mel feels that, you know, we're not gonna buy any more Pat McGrath until she starts doing something different. I feel like she's beaten the gold, pink, you know, color story to death at this point and I'm gonna let other people enjoy her palettes, but unless it's something really different, I won't be buying Pat McGrath anytime soon. Okay, I'm gonna start off by saying I really hate this palette by Ofra. This is their Glitch Eyeshadow Palette for $29, and it's, it reminds me of 1999, like, so hard because it's these, like, frosty pastel shades, and I really don't know what anyone would do with all of these colors in one palette. It could have also been like a quarter of the size because there's all that space between each of the shadows. I don't know, I feel like Ofer tries so hard to be cool, but then they're like that one kid at the party that wants to fit in with all the other cool eyeshadow palettes, but then they're like, they don't. Like, this was one of those where the outer packaging is cooler than the inside packaging. I don't know. I just wish somebody would tell them, like, make them smaller, don't make them. I don't know, so big and then have like three little <laughs> pans in each row. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so I haven't talked about these yet either, but 
Juvia's Place launched, I don't think I did anyway, Juvia's Place launched four mini eyeshadow palettes. These are $13.99 each or you can get a bundle for $52. I did post a video swatching them and I did an eye look with one of the palettes and I have been playing with them the last week or so. So I will review them for you guys pretty soon. My, you know, Cliff Notes version of how I feel about those palettes is that I feel like they aren't as pigmented as I remember Juvia's Place being. Um, some of the foil shadows, it's really quite the fight to pick them up with a brush. So usually I'm, I feel like I'm used to Juvia's Place being so pigmented that I can just pick them up with a brush and then they lay on my eyes really beautifully. They just glide on, no hassle. But these ones, there's a bit of a fight, but I mean, you can still achieve a beautiful eye look. There's no denying that. They're not the best eyeshadow palettes I've ever tried from Juvia's Place, if I'm being very honest with you guys. Okay, here's another drugstore foundation I really want to try. I haven't seen this in store. I actually did go in with my husband to look for this, but I didn't see it at my drugstore. So this is the new Wet n Wild Dewy Foundation and I don't know, it's like so cheap, like $7 in 20 shades that I'm really, really curious to see it in person and see if I can get a color match. If not, I won't get it, but I just thought it looked really, really interesting. And yeah, I kind of have my eye on it. I know Angie picked it up, so I'm thinking she's gonna have a video on it and I'll be really curious to hear her opinion on the foundation, but so far I haven't really looked for any videos on it or anything like that. If I see it in store though, I'm very curious to see what kind of shade range they have. And then last but certainly not least is one of my favorite brands. Let me grab the palette because I was so lucky and received it in PR. Sydney Grace is coming out with the Enduring Love palette. Now I've worn this palette two times already and it's absolutely stunning. This is so not my color scheme. If you guys know me, not really a cool tone person. But these shades just create such great everyday eyeshadow looks and you can like amp them up with toppers and glitters and things like that. But overall, this is just such a great like go-to palette for you guys. Honestly, I am so glad I got to try this. I hope they do a warm tone version of this because I think it would be so many people's like everyday staple palette because their quality is so good. If this color story does not appeal to you, you can definitely look up their single shadows. I know the single shades. I think they said their whole website is gonna be on sale when this launches on the 13th. So check it out. It comes in two different shades. I have the darker shade palette and then there is a lighter version as well. I, I love this. <laughs> I'm, this is like, I recently saw Julia Mazzucato did a video call makeup she didn't expect to love. Or was that, was that Julia? Yeah, I think Julia did a video and I was not expecting to love this as much as I do, but I'm so glad I got to try it because, oh my God, those metallic shadows are bomb. So it really like invigorated my love for Sydney Grace back inside me because I want to I wanna organize my single eyeshadows. They're such a hot mess right now because I have so many. I really want to pare down my collection. That's one of my big goals for this year. I don't really want to buy single eyeshadows, but I want to curate what I have. So I did pick up two big Adept palettes. And as soon as I get here, I'm just going to make this like bomb Sydney Grace palette with like my favorite singles. And it's going to live on my vanity and I'm going to use it because I'm so excited to just go back to that formula again. Ugh. Such a hidden gem in the beauty community. Like, it's crazy. So, I love finding brands. And my two big inspirations for finding new brands are Angie and Amy because they're so in tune with the indies. And so, I think Angie talked about this in her Will I Buy It video. And Amy's been posting about Copacita cosmetics and their collab with basket case beauty and they did this gorgeous palette with some mattes 
and some beautiful iridescent duochrome shades. And this is a $32 palette and I think it launched on New Year's and I remember being at our New Year's party and I was like looking at this palette online and I was like, oh, I'll just buy it when I get home. And I it sold out by the time I decided to get it. So I couldn't get it, but I think she's gonna do a restock of it. I don't know when, but I know Amy got it for sure, so I'm waiting for Amy's video. And depending on what Amy says about the palette, I think this might be palette number four for me for January because it's an indie and yeah, just very, very cool stuff. So very excited for that. And then Midas Cosmetics is collabing with Smoky Glow. I don't know if I talked about this in my last Will I Buy It video, but sometimes I forget to do these things. And I did see on Hannah's um, Instagram as well as Midas, their collab is going to be revealed on January 23rd. So we'll have to keep our eyes peeled on that. Very interested to see what she put together. And yeah, it's just so cool to see YouTubers that have persevered and now they're like changing the world. Like how cool is that? So the last indie thing I want to talk about is Cleonaut Cosmetics. They announced a restock of their stained glass collection. Okay, so they are launching some new shades to the stained glass collection, but for the first time ever, all stained glass collection single eyeshadows will be 15% off, including new shades. We are still sorting out how bundles will be priced and change with additions to new shades. So that's really cool. And that race talk is happening on the 21st of January at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I didn't know there was going to be a sale. Dang it. Because I wasn't going to get any more of the stained glass shadows. Because I have like 12... I have 15 stained glass eyeshadows, so I feel like that's a really good amount. I have a good handle on the formula and things like that. But now that there's going to be a sale and there's going to be new shadows, I'm going to have to keep my eye open and see what shades they come out with. Because that, a sale on those could be a game changer because they are spendy little guys, <laughs> you know, over there. So yeah I think that's it guys I feel like I talk forever as per always with these videos but I hope you guys enjoyed let me know your thoughts on these new makeup releases down in my comment section if you guys ever see new makeup releases that you want me to talk about that aren't like on trend mood because I usually check trend mood that's usually on you know on my list of places to keep an eye out for new makeup releases but stuff like you know, brands off the beaten path, feel free to tag me because I love finding stuff like that. It's always interesting and I'll definitely talk about it in a video. Also, if you guys want to check out the merch, it's available. I will link it in my description box and yeah, we'll see what you guys think. Let me know all your thoughts down there. I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye!